We are going to take a walk into this bog, starting from the dark trees one sees in the distance, and then along the left side of the creek. Walking into a bog is a journey from dark to light, beginning under a dense canopy and moving into the full sun of a more open mat. Walking from an upland into a bog is a walk of gradients or change. There is a vegetational gradient, a woody plant density gradient, a peat depth gradient, a nutrient gradient, and a sunlight gradient. Woody stem density is greatest as we enter the bog near the upland peatland boundary. Fewer woody stems are encountered as we walk further into the bog. We see the vegetational gradient beginning with tall trees, such as black spruce, eastern larch, and balsam fir, changing to shorter trees of the same species, then changing to tall shrubs and smaller trees, and then to low shrubs like leatherleaf, bog andromeda, Labrador tea, and bog laurel, and finally to the open bog mat dominated by sphagnum moss. As one walks into the bog, the peat gets thicker and typically less compact. When first entering the bog near larger trees, the footing may feel spongy but still supportive of weight. Out on the edge of the peatland, near open water, it feels like walking on a waterbed, where the peat mat may actually extend out over open water. Care must be taken at this end of the peat gradient not to fall through the peat mat. Where we entered the bog at the upland peatland boundary, nutrients can be relatively high. Near the open creek or water boundary, nutrients can also be relatively high because of nutrient-rich open water affecting the floating edge of the bog. Nutrient levels may be relatively low in the center of the bog because there, nutrients are only derived from rain and atmospheric inputs. Upwellings of nutrient-rich groundwater can sometimes penetrate through the peat mat and reach the surface of the bog, resulting in unexpected pockets of vegetation in an otherwise nutrient-poor bog mat. The gradients we see in this bog are all influenced by water quality and water quantity. Where there is less water, there is thinner peat and a predominance of tall woody plants. Where there is an exchange of water, either from surface or groundwater sources, there are greater levels of nutrients and more nutrient-demanding plants. Where there is more water, there are fewer tall woody plants and more low herbaceous plants. Bogs are remarkable systems that are constructed of microhabitats influenced by water quality, water quantity, and light. These microhabitats provide conditions for specialized plants to thrive. Specialized plants such as sphagnum moss, orchids, pitcher plants, and cotton grass are adapted to the difficult conditions of living in a bog mat. 